The noise from Minneapolis-St. Paul International Airport is tough to escape if you live near it. What determines whether the planes fly over your house, how often they do, and how noisy they are? It's a complex combination of things. The Federal Aviation Administration, or FAA, is the regulating agency for airports and airlines. Their first and foremost responsibility is maintaining safety, uh, both on the ground and in the air. Basically, aircraft need to land and take off into the winds, so they take a look at the, the wind conditions, both in the air and um, on the ground. Here's a photo showing the airport in relation to Egan. Closer, you can see on the left side of the airport is Cedar Avenue, or Highway 77. Across the top, running east-west, is Crosstown Highway 62. And along the bottom, running east-west, is I-494 in Bloomington and across the river into Egan. Each end of a runway has its own number, so pilots know which end to use. The numbers are based on a formula of compass readings. You'll hear runways referred to by their numbers or by their common names. There are um, four runways at MSP, two parallel runways, which are the primary runways, and they face northwest and southeast, and the new north-south runway, which was built in 2005, runway 1735, and then a crosswind runway, uh, runway 422. The numbers are based on what you would see as a pilot coming into the airport. So, if you are coming in from the northwest over Minneapolis, the runway on your right is 12 right. Now, if you're coming in from the southeast over Egan, the runways are numbered 30 right and 30 left, or 30R and 30L. Delta 2459, Minneapolis approach, runway 30 right. 30 right, Delta 2459. We also have a runway use system. It prioritizes the runways based on um, avoiding residential areas. The MAC keeps track of flight paths. They've published them as flight tracks. These are the red lines for arrivals on a typical day as they come in over Egan. When the airport is in what we call a north configuration, that means departures are going over the city of Minneapolis and arrivals are coming over the city of Egan, um, that allows air traffic control the greatest efficiency in the airspace because it allows three arrival runways to land on. Um, however, if the wind is from the south or southeast, we will be uh, typically in a south flow configuration, so departures will be going over Egan. This is an example of departures as they go south over Egan. So the first priority for departures is runways 12 left and 12 right over the Egan-Mendota Heights departure corridor. Egan's leaders and planners wisely zoned the corridor for office, warehouse, and industrial development. Those uses don't suffer as much as homeowners do from the airport noise. So we work with the FAA to monitor the usage of that procedure and if we see that falling a little bit short, we work with uh, air traffic control management to see if there are uh, training opportunities that they can employ with their, um, with their controllers. But years later, the airport expanded, adding the north-south runway. The second priority for departures is runway 17 because we have a river departure procedure off of that runway. Flights heading to western destinations on the north-south runway turn right over the Minnesota River Valley towards Burnsville. Thus decreasing the residential overflights. But sometimes they turn left and go over the center of Egan to reach other destinations. And then that is a heavily used departure path for those departures to get in line with their destination airport. It also keeps them separated from departures off of the parallel runways. Uh, the next priority is a balanced use of runway 422, which is our longest runway at the airport. However, it's used very little because it essentially turns the airport into a one runway system. There's a regional air traffic control center in Farmington, and there's a control tower on site at the airport. They have a lot of factors to consider besides wind. 
um, you know, what's coming inbound and what's scheduled to be outbound to ensure that they have adequate capacity. The air traffic controllers give them speeds to fly, they give them altitudes and headings to fly. Departure of Lake Chipper climate Just to make sure that there is adequate separation, especially in the busy terminal area. Um, as aircraft are departing and arriving in the same patch of land. Exit 37, 82 Minneapolis ground, push up through 30 left, companies inbound at Charlie 20. As long as safety isn't compromised, there are some choices on where the planes go. Every city surrounding the airport would just as soon send the noise somewhere else. At the city, we look at the three Bs of the airport, which is the burden, which is the airport noise the benefit, which is the jobs that it brings. Many employees of the airport live in Egan, both from the airline side as well as the hospitality side of the airport. There are many shipping companies from the air freight consolidators down to the trucking companies that have put their businesses in Egan because of how easy it is to get from Egan to the airport. And then the balance, make sure that you know, the benefit stays in line with, with the burden that we have to bear for, for the airport noise. Basically, there's really not a lot we can do to stop the noise. We, we have no authority to make the FAA change their flight paths or where they fly. However, political pressure and the sense that Egan residents shouldn't be unfairly burdened does result in changes. The airport is ominous. There's the MAC, there's the FAA, there are you know, a lot of entities that are involved. But the Egan Airport Relations Commission gives our citizens a funnel, a contact point, uh, to voice their concerns as well as uh, they rely on us to educate them on what's going on and maybe sift through some of the acronyms that are used in aviation and sift through some of the policies and procedures that don't necessarily make sense on the surface of how that affects Egan, but they rely on us to translate that into what does that mean for my city? The city of Egan has a very respectful working relationship with the MAC and the FAA. The city trusts that the agencies will try to follow flight corridors, but the city also verifies what really happens by monitoring flight records and by looking at the results of 39 noise monitors scattered throughout the area around the airport. There are several ways for you to monitor airport noise on your own and ways to register your complaints about the noise. You can go to the website, macnoise.com. You can call the Mac Noise hotline at 612-726-9411. You can also leave a message at that number if you want someone to call you back. Egan residents can also contact Assistant City Administrator Diane Miller at 651-675-5014. Or you can send an email to the Airport Relations Commission, which is at arc at cityofegan.com.